what it is, and it will be making its way into our public schools. With me now to tell us about the effort are DOE's Chris Anderson and Guam Crime Stoppers President Cynthia Jackson. Half a day to you both. Half a day. All right, so the services that you both respectively provide are incredibly valuable to the community. So Cynthia, um, everybody knows about Crime Stoppers and you know what we as citizens can do to protect the community and how we can augment law enforcement and everything. But now mm -hmm. taking that into the school system, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of an evolution of the concept. So tell me about that. Well, it all started out with uh, our good lady, Senator Ali Yamashita and her staff. And I'm sure they were you know, just as uh, upset with all the vandalism and burglaries that were happening, I'm sorry, um, vandalisms in the school and um, and and all the disruption and um, the dust <laughs> cut <laughs> mm -hmm. and how they destroyed all this property for the the teachers and the students so uh, Lou Benventi from that office um, thought about crime, uh, school crime stoppers mm -hmm. and she saw that it was uh, on nationwide and she said what about this and so that's how that started we started to brainstorm and she brought in the right um, stakeholders. She brought us in as a crime stopper group. She, uh, GPD was called in and GDOE was called in because that was the only way this could be effective and, and successful. And together we, they introduced um, a bill and it now is law, Public Law 31100, and it requires the implementation of the school crime stopper program in all 40 schools in the Guam public school system. That is a massive undertaking just considering Correct. the scale of this and you know like the logistics that go into it. So Chris, from your perspective, uh, from DOE, because obviously this involves, you know, um, adults and community members who are around the school and, you know, keep an eye out for things, but also as far as faculty and students themselves getting involved in everything like that, what are some of the parameters that you have to deal with? Right. Well, Jason, you know, actually from the school standpoint, it's really not that much logistically involved. It's mm -hmm. really just um, having a school safety coordinator, which is what we need to do. Every school mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. a designated school safety coordinator who's responsible to uh, liaison with the uh, the uh, Crime Stoppers coordinator, which is uh, Officer Uggen, and <clears throat> that person uh, again, their their primary responsibility really is just to uh, interface with the uh, liaison, and then to provide you know educational opportunities for faculty, staff, and the community of that school to understand uh, how kids can you know um, submit a tip. Mm -hmm. So it's really not that involved, but it's really just more educating the community about how they can they, they can be empowered to take ownership of their schools and you know, report crimes when they happen. Now that's an interesting point because uh, Cynthia, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when uh, I was a kid and somebody went around from GovGuam and they gave my parents these big stickers and they said, put these up in your kids' windows and it was the uh, Neighborhood Watch program. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Um, and you know, we were taught to have pride about your neighborhood yes. and about your village and you know, keep everybody safe and help your neighbors out. Right. Uh, how are you kind of applying that metaphor to schools? Well, instead of now applying stickers, everybody is a crime stopper themselves. Like the kids, which in the public school system, 36,000 kids, mm -hmm. right? So they now are the eyes and ears for crime prevention. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking it at a lower level where they know things and they can say things. They can actually have a direct impact on how things are making a difference in their school and, and getting crime solved. So. It's brought down to their level, their, where they have, they're empowered to actually do something. And that's what's so exciting. The kids have an opportunity to text, call in, email, or even go the old school way and write a tip and put it in a tip box at each school. Mm -hmm. So that, that, is, that is pretty old school yeah. for, for some kids these days. It's like, <laughs> kids are going to say, you know, is there a Facebook page I can go to to help out? Or? They will have that. Um, Excellent. And yes, Sergeant Mike will go into that in more detail. He'll go through every avenue that kids normally reach out to, All right, and that's great. Well, everybody sit tight for that because Sergeant Mike Uggen will join us as we talked about. But uh, let's talk about training real quick now before we go to commercial break. Um, what type of training is involved in this and exactly who gets uh, through it? Because, Chris, you were mentioning there are centralized um, school coordinators for every school. Right. <clears throat> well, actually, just interesting you mentioned that. We just uh, completed a four-hour block of instruction for all the school safety coordinators. Thank you to uh, Cynthia Jackson, who coordinated that, that training piece with uh, Sergeant uh, Kim uh, Buffett. Buffett, right, from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then Officer Mike Uggen was also part of that. So um, that was more or less just a four-hour block of instruction to make sure that school uh, safety coordinators understood what their duties and responsibilities were. And again, sort of how we were going to lay this out and how they were going to go back to their respective schools and work with the students, faculty, and staff, and administrators to uh, make sure they understood how this was going to work. 
And so it really is very simple. It's just a matter of making sure people are empowered with the knowledge of how to file tips. And as Cynthia mentioned, you know, they can either do it the old school way, which is a tip box, uh, if they feel comfortable and confident enough to be able to file a tip so that, you know, because anonymity is very important in this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but just, it's there just to provide m multiple opportunities for kids to be able to file a tip. So it's that way, the online version of web tip, mm -hmm. they can actually call or they can now do text as well. So again, giving multiple opportunities for people to be able to report a crime and just empowers them to take ownership of, uh, you know, their schools to ensure burglaries are uh, prevented, if not eliminated, and uh, no vandalism or... All right, well, I really want to hear about this electronic stuff, so let's go ahead and go to commercial break, and let's bring in Sergeant Mike Hogan from the Guam Police Department, because we are going to talk about this and much more when our special look at Crime Stoppers in the schools continues right after this.